Chapter 4, Section 4. How does private property affect relationships? Obviously, capitalist private property affects relationships between people by creating structures of power. Property, as we've argued all throughout this document, creates relationships based on domination and thus cannot help but produce servile tendencies within those subject to them. It also produces rebellious tendencies as well. The actual ratio between the two tendencies dependent on the individual in question and the community they are in. As anarchists have long recognized power corrupts, Lord Acton's rule. Power tends to corrupt, absolute power corrupts absolutely, but those subjected to it and those who exercise it. While few, if any, anarchists would fail to recognize the importance of possession, which creates the necessary space all individuals need to be themselves, they all agree that private property corrupts this liberatory aspect of property by allowing relationships of domination and oppression to be built on top of it. Because of this recognition, all anarchists have tried to equalize property and turn it back into possession. Also, capitalist individualism actively builds barriers between people. Un under capitalism, money rules and individuality is expressed via consumption choices, i.e. money. But money does not encourage empathy with others. As Frank Str uh, Stronach, chair of Magna International, a Canadian auto parts manufacturer that shifted its production to Mexico, put it, To be in business, your first mandate is to make money, and money has no heart, no soul, no conscience, no homeland. Cited by Doug Henwood, Wall Street, uh, page 113. And for those who study economics, it's a seen, it is seen that this dehumanizing effect strikes them as well. Quote, Studying economics also seems to make you a nastier person. Psychological studies have shown that uh, uh, economics graduate students are more likely to free ride or shirk contributions to an experimental public goods account in the pursuit of higher private returns than the general public. Economists also are less generous than other academics in charitable giving. Undergraduate economics majors are more likely to defect in their classic prisoner's dilemma game than any other major. And on other tests, students grow less honest expressing less of a tendency, for example, to return found money after studying economics, but not studying a control subject like astronomy. This is no surprise, really. Mainstream economics is built entirely on a notion of self-interested individuals, rational self-maximizers, who can order their wants and spending accordingly. There's little room for sentient uncertainty, uh, selflessness, and in social institutions. Whether this is an accurate picture of the average human is open to question, but there's no question that capitalism as a system and economics as a discipline both reward people who conform to the model. Again, Doug Henwood, Wall Street, page 143 for citation. Which, of course, highlights the problems within the traitor model uh, advocated by Ayn Rand. According to her, the traitor is the example of moral behavior. You have something I want, I have something you want. We trade and we both benefit, and so our activity is self-interested and no one sacrifices themselves for another. While this has some intuitive appeal, it fails to note that in the real world, it's pure fantasy. The trader gets to get the best deal possible for themselves, and if the bargaining positions are unequal, then one person will gain at the expense of the other. If the commodity being traded is labor, the seller may not even have the option of not trading at all. The trader is only involved in economic exchange and has no concern for the welfare of the person they're trading with. They are a bearer of things, not an individual with a wide range of interests, concerns, hopes, or dreams. They are... These are irrelevant, unless you can make money out of them, of course. Thus, the trader is often a manipulator, and outside novels, it's most definitely a case of buyer beware. If the trader model is taken as the basis of interpersonal relationships, economic gain replaces respect and empathy for others. It replaces human relationships with relationships based on things, and such a mentality does not encompass how interpersonal relationships affect both you and the society you live in. In the end, it impoverishes society and the individual. Yes, any relationship must be based upon self-interest. Mutual aid is, after all, something we do because it benefits, we benefit from it in some way. But the trader model presents such a narrow self-interest that it is useless and actively impoverishes the very thing we should be protecting, individuality and interpersonal relationships.